I think we we figured that uh, quit while you're winning, and uh, you know you can go on too long with these things. The BBC wanted us to go on, but uh, you know we, we thought we just about had enough, and uh, we, I think we finished at the right time. Uh, region? Yes. Yes, we finished just about the right time because they were fading out, <laughs> but they were marvellous, and you've got to call it a day someday. There's not many left, you know. <laughs> yes, even, even the ones that are left are a bit dubious from time to time. <laughs> Particularly late on a Friday night. <laughs> but never mind. Another question. Anyone else have a question? Anybody here? There you are. Who's got a question? Or is that just a wave? That's just a wave. No? It's very difficult, isn't it, finding something to say at a moment like this because you you don't know you don't know what you can ask. All the questions have been asked, sir. Bill, what's it like to have a large hose pipe up your nose? It's like taking cocaine, really. Yes, and it stings a bit more. That's all. No, I mean, I mean, it's all in the course of course of duty, you know. Whenever I did those little stunts, I always thought of the check at the end of the week. It got me through, got me through many hours of misery. Uh, but it was all lovely working with, with David and Jimmy. Well, particularly David. I mean, you know, Jimmy used to talk about criticising everything. But, but David was marvellous. You see, he treated us all like uh, a, a bunch of naughty schoolboys, really. And as long as we behaved ourselves and did what we did, he used to, you know, I mean. If Arnold Ridley wanted to have a couple of extra gins at uh, lunchtime, well, David would shoot him in half past three, something like that. Never, never, never sort of never bust with anybody about it. If Arthur Lowe was a bit sort of short on words, um, you know, he'd go behind a tree, Arthur, pretend he was spending a penny, but he was looking at his lines. <laughs> so, and David put up with all that because that's, that's the sort of man. Very experienced director, psychiatrist as well, he was. He really was. He knew, knew how to get the best out of everybody. So that's uh, that's like having a hose pipe up your nose, isn't it? Oh, oh, yes, I'm glad, glad it wasn't up me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> never knew what we were going to... Uh, hello, what's this? What? Hello, we're just going to give you a little little lesson in, act, uh, in microphone technique, Mr. Burke. You've got to keep the microphone. See, people can't hear what you're saying. Hey, on your every word. Uh, on a <laughs> 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 Your questions. Oh, yeah. How about if, if I if I ask a question, I'd like to ask Frank Williams whether whether he preferred being a vicar or a bishop because he got got promotion and went on, and whether he preferred the costumes when he got to being a bishop. Tell us about that, Frank, because I think secretly you wouldn't have minded being. I, I, uh, I wrote really. got no reply. Well, I have to say, the costumes were much prettier being a bishop. You know, I mean, I, you know, they're very yeah. colourful. And um, Mary Husband got me the most wonderful um, Episcopal ring, which I, I still got, and I wear it on occasions to pretend I'm a bishop. So, yes, I like being a bishop. I could still be a bishop. I could be the Archbishop of Canterbury, actually. I have been mistaken for him, so there you are. <laughs> I think if they put it to the vote, we'd all vote for Frank, don't you, to be the next Archbishop of Canterbury? Yes, sir. <laughs> Band of the Coldstream Guards under uh, uh, Trevor C. Sharp, of course, played the, the music. I expect you had a hand in that, did you, Jimmy? Yeah. Organising them? Getting them to play it? Yes, Colonel Sharp, of course he is. The band of the Cold Street Guards. It was a wonderful day. Bud Flanagan. It was the last thing he ever did. Three months before he died. <laughs> Colonel Trevor Sharp, as he now is, is still alive. I was talking to him the other day. And uh, you'll notice if you watch Dad's army over a period, he was Lieutenant uh, Trevor Sharp, Captain Trevor Sharp, Major Trevor Sharp, and we finished up the series with Colonel Trevor Sharp. Wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, the uh, instrumentalists, they all uh, in the army had to play two instruments, so we had them play their second instruments, and that's why it sounds a bit like an overarty act. <laughs> Quite true. Jollywood, yes. Trevor Sharp went on to be, of course, the uh, senior man of the British uh, Army and the, the, the head of Army Music. 
gentleman there, sir? Was Dad's Army the best series, their favourite series they created? And if not, what was their favourite series they created? Was Dad's Army the favourite series you created? Well, David Croft created more series than anybody probably in British television. Perhaps you'd like to answer that. I think they were all great fun. Uh, Dad's Army was especially good fun because uh, they were all very experienced performers and it was uh, great to, to, to work with them. Also, it was the first of the great series, really, and uh, it was all fresh to us, really, and uh, it was marvellous fun. I expect everyone want to know what the next series is going to be, David. <laughs> How long did it take to one, uh, make one episode? Next question there, how long did it take to, to make one episode? Well, of course, it's rather hard to say because uh, we used to go on location and do all the outside shots all in one lump and then go back into the uh, television centre and, and do an episode a week. So they would do all the exteriors and then uh, do an episode. You're very experienced at all of that, though, Brenda. You used to go and do all that once a week stuff. Did you enjoy that? Yes, you, yes I did. It's a bit nerve wracking, but yes, yes, I did enjoy it. And of course, we did it in front of an audience. So that was nice, and we got the audience reaction too. So, no, I, I, I enjoyed it very much. I'm very glad to be asked, and I'm very glad I did have an opportunity to do one episode of Dad's Army because I felt it was a great honour, and it's lovely to be associated with it. It's a classic. Not just because honour, you had as we had you. Thank you. Well, of course, then she went on to be uh, the, the one with the most delicious cherry cake in all of England, Mrs. Lipson. Yes, I'd like to uh, ask, ask uh, Pamela Cundell now to uh, tell you how marvellous she was at learning her lines. She's a, a, a fanatic when it came to that. Tell us. Well, I must tell you, darlings, it, just was, it was very nerve wracking. But on the Monday, we had the read through. On the Tuesday, we had to learn the lines and were supposed to know them by the Wednesday. On the Thursday, the technicians came in and did it, and we did it on the Friday. So it really was all go, go, go. And there was one particular episode when um, the Americans, and uh, they were going to give me nylons or something like that. And there was one line in the blue thing, and could I get it right? Could I help? So Clive came up one day and he said, you know what you want to do, Pam? He said, write it on the palm of your hand. Write the words and then just put a gesture like that, look at it and you'll remember it. So I thought, right, so I wrote this, this line on the palm of my hand. Comes transmission. I get very nervous. So when I looked down, all the writing had run because my palms were all sweaty. <laughs> but I said the right line. Although I didn't look it, I said it. So it just shows you, you never use tricks because they don't work. But it was hard work, but it was very gratifying. And I can remember Jimmy coming around one day and saying to me, what do you think you are doing? Well, uh, uh, Jimmy, I, I, I just were uh, uh, walking over there. He said, I don't want any funny walks. He said, I want Pamela Cundell as Pamela Cundell. And he's just like a headmaster. <laughs> And I never did anything like that again. I was just Pamela Cundell. And thank you, Jimmy, for that very good advice. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, darlings. We won't say anything about your funny walk now. <laughs> well, you banged a leg yesterday, so a bit of a limp. We were very pleased today to have uh, Wendy Richard with us, who, of course, was uh, Joe Walker's girlfriend. And actually, you wound up with two names, didn't you, during the show? Tell us about that. Everybody. I just want to say, first of all, it is such an honour to have been allowed to appear in Dad's Army. It was a bit like being allowed into an exclusive gentleman's club because they were all wonderful people. And if you look, you realise that not one of them were comics. They were all actors. And as David used to say to us, play it for truth and the laughs will come. Nowadays, you watch some people in certain programs, struggling there to get a laugh, overacting like mad, and they waste their tongues that ain't funny because they're not such good writers as those two gentlemen are. <laughs> anyway, that's the bitch you left over. <laughs> um, no, so I started off first of all as Edith Parrish, and I suddenly became Shirley, for which in a way I'm very grateful because I've had a very long and happy professional association with uh, David Croft, ODE here. Um, because later on I became another Shirley for him, of course. I became Shirley Brahms in um, Grace Brothers in Are You Being Served? But we're not here to talk about that today. 
But Dad's army will go on forever because it keeps new generations keep discovering it. And that's why it will go on and on and on because they don't make programs like that anymore. Thank you. <laughs>